Hi, I'm Joe Legilia, and on this episode of Not Your Average Joe, we're talking with Jamie Littell of Mojo's in downtown Plainfield. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Joe, powered by Mortgage Message. My name is Joe Legilia, and today I'm joined with Jamie Little of Mojo's in downtown Plainfield. Jamie, welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, listen, I want to start off the interview. I'm so excited to have you on. Um, very much a focal point in the community. And just to begin, for anybody who doesn't know you, just kind of tell everybody who you are and, and what you do. Well, I'm Jamie Littell. I own a Cajun restaurant downtown Plainfield called Mojo's. We make everything from scratch, have the most amazing staff, and just like to have a lot of fun serving food. Absolutely. Everybody knows the Cajun food if they've had it once. Um, so let me start off by saying, just to give some baseline here, uh, kind of talk about where Mojo's started, how it came to be, and kind of that dream coming to fruition for you. Oh, well, um, honestly, my husband and I... <laughs> We kind of were sick of having our own bosses, <laughs> so we wanted to become some <laughs> bosses of our own and open something. We always had um, ideas, and we write them down on napkins for when we had our own restaurant because we worked in restaurants through college, through high school, and Mojo's was just – it never had a name, <laughs> but, right. but we knew how we wanted the decor and Cajun something you never – we just never thought we'd get sick of eating because you know that's all you're going to eat now the rest of your life. <laughs> and that's kind of how it came to be. I still have all the napkins with the pictures of how we wanted the decor to be and wow. the first menu and everything. Well, I, I, I will tell you, um, I think that's from an entrepreneurial standpoint, pretty amazing. Um, you hear about ideas coming from a napkin and that's pretty neat. Um, we were talking before we went on the show here about just the long journey that it's been since 2004, 2005. And I, I, I think having personally spent almost every Fat Tuesday at your establishment, <laughs> almost every Halloween at your establishment, um, you've brought just an unbelievable place for the community to come, to be together, uh, shed their skin, so to speak. And uh, I, I want to kind of take the interview to a place to talk about with all of that good joy that's been brought over the years. Just kind of talk about from a 30,000 foot view, the last 21 months, 22 months, what, what has that been for Jamie? Yeah. Well, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, I mean, owning a restaurant is probably the worst business to be in through a pandemic no in Illinois, especially. But then also um, with, you know, Stu passed away. So it's just me and the four kids. So when they put them all on e-learning and then closed down the restaurant and then we had to do the carry out, which we were never big on carry out. So we had no idea what we were doing with that. And, um, the e-learning alone was kind of a nightmare for me. So any parents that feel like they failed that miserably, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think terrible. you're the only one. Don't think you're the only one. They definitely declined under my tutelage. <laughs> so <laughs> the emails alone. Yeah. Uh, so that was, I mean, I mean, it's definitely challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And then having to run the e-learning, of course, as we've talked about on so many other guests on this show, you're a parent, you had to become a teacher, and oh, by the way, you're running a business during a pandemic. Um, and I want to kind of go there to say one of the, you know, very, very specific reasons you were nominated as a real community hero on the show, and you were nominated by multiple people, there was a very specific moment in history that happened. And I don't, I don't want to say it any other way than let it be your words, but it was a moment that the community unbelievably showed up based off of an initiative that you decided to take in the height of the pandemic. And I just like, if you could, in your own words, kind of talk about what that moment was. Well, I, when, when we did the employee day, yeah. well, there was, when it led up to it, I mean, the world's so different now than it was Oh, what, almost two years ago. I mean, everybody, every, er, a lot of our staff, I mean, they're raising families. Yeah. It was their full-time job. And I mean, I, they were with me for years and years. And then when they said, you're, we're closing you down. I mean, there's no jobs for it. There was nothing for anyone to do. 
there's only takes so many people to try to do carry out and I didn't know I was scared they have mortgage payments they're feeding their children so we started off just having these meals at the restaurant where everybody came in with their kids and we just made dinner for the all the employees every night and we would sit there and talk and I mean it was heartbreaking scary unemployment kept crashing nobody could get their money you know it just was sort of a huge mess so it was in the very beginning when it seemed really scary too yeah because <laughs> nobody knew you know how bad this virus was how easily you can catch it is it on you know that piece of paper right right <laughs> Absol- absolutely I mean? absolutely so everybody's like leaving their groceries outside for three days <laughs> before bringing them in it was like crazy right so uh uh it was honestly my chef and I and my manager, Carlos, we just, Chef Ryan was like, you know, we have to do something for these guys. We And that's what we came up with was, okay, it'll only cost us this much to get this food in. We'll plan it out like a fast and do carry out and have all the proceeds, you know, what I could cover, have all the proceeds go to the, all the employees we just distributed evenly. And I had no idea... It was going to be such a huge deal. <laughs> I mean, I just put it on Facebook and I put it on our website and then, you know, 1019 called and then all of a sudden the news got involved. I'm like, oh, crap. Um, and by, I think it was one in the afternoon, we had a line of cars down Lockport Street, all the way down 126. I mean, it went on for miles. You couldn't even get downtown. People couldn't even get to us. <laughs> we remember. And then the... <laughs> The mayor <laughs> and the police, everyone started calling, asking what, um, why there was all this traffic and why didn't I warn them? I'm like, I had no idea people would respond this way and everybody wanted to help. So the girls were all drawing on cars, I mean, to be cute, but then also to know who the cars were because it's a lot different waiting on a table than trying to find a car five blocks down the street. Right, right. And it was... It was insane, but it was super fun. We ended up raising $27,000. We ran out of food. By the end, of, by 6 o'clock, we were literally just selling what we had left, but we were out of boxes. We just ran out of everything. We didn't have silverware to put in anything. We ran out of bags. So we had uh, the tiny little, you know, some of the tiny little bowls left over. Here we have some beignets. You want them? <laughs> <laughs> and the people that I thought would be angry – when we ran out of food, it all happened because the stupid online that we had no idea, <laughs> no idea how to use it. <laughs> we never did online before this. It was like our second day having it. Um, I think it was 126 orders went through in less than four minutes, oh which God. I didn't realize was a thing. It just never occurred that that could happen. Best laid plans. So when it started printing off the tickets, I'm like, holy crap, because we already had all these phone orders, too, going through. The phone was going crazy. I disabled it to stop taking orders, but it kept printing. It kept printing for like an hour. And the tech guy, thank God, was there supporting and helping us. You know, all the staff had come in to help do the food. And uh, I'm like, what is wrong with this thing? It's broken. It just keeps going. (laughs) He's like, all those orders went through in four minutes, Jamie. And I'm like, so we just didn't even have enough food to complete them all so all these people are standing around I went outside and had to tell them we were out of food and I thought they were going to kill me yeah and they didn't they clapped and said way to go great job still wanted to pay for the food were handing me money to give to the staff I mean this was our community I just cared so much about helping these men and women out I mean it would just I started like ugly crying <laughs> and went inside and told the staff and then they were crying. It was just, I mean, I just, something I'll definitely take with me forever. Well, and I, and I think that it brought hope to not just your employees, which when you speak about them, you could see the passion um, that you speak of them as if they're family, which is amazing. And I think it not only brought hope to that family, the Mojo's family, but I think in the moment, from my perspective, um, as we were sharing before we came on, I remember sitting here, literally where I'm sitting now, getting these calls from friends in the community saying, can you believe what's happening at Mojo's right now? And I remember saying, this is bringing hope to an entire industry. This is bringing hope to an entire restaurant industry that's been debilitated, um, something completely out of their control, owners, uh, people who rely on this. 
And I thought of that moment, and I'll always think of that moment as, and you could tell with your humble spirit, it, it wasn't your intention, but you brought a moment of hope to a community and an industry that needed it so desperately. That's what it meant to me. What did that moment mean to you? I, uh, I just, I, I, I just love them and under, I mean, a lot of them are with me now. I mean, they had to go find other jobs. They, which are totally understandable, but I mean, when they're, when you have these people and they're on your watch, when, you know, a worldwide pandemic happens, you know, you just want to make sure you're going to do right by them regardless. Yeah. And they, if you saw, if you saw their faces, I got to drive around 72 different homes. I drove around and brought it to them in Corona bottles. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was fun trying to have the kitchen staff. I'm like, you're not drinking the Corona bottles fast enough. <laughs> so <laughs> stuffing the money in there. And then we put it, the Corona bottles upside down on toilet paper and wrapped it in peace. <laughs> oh, that's great. 72 of them. I got to bring it there and watch them crack open the bottles and see their families and see, you know, you see their extended families and what they're what they were fighting for. I mean, they were literally left with no device. Yeah. And I mean that 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 that's the part that I loved. Well, it's it's an amazing story that we certainly wanted to document. Uh, the individuals who nominated you wanted to document, uh, and it's just a beautiful response to kind of segue from that. And because that's true, you know, I, you look at that and you say, okay, 2020, right? You think about, and you said it more eloquently than me, you know, you think about how hard it is to be a restaurant owner or just in the industry period over these last two years. And looking at 2020 and the problems that it had and the solutions you figured out to overcome, and now looking at 2021 that has brought a whole new bag, um, <laughs> just kind of reflect on that if you can, just for a bit as far as what that's meant to you. Well, this year's like, it's... I don't know. I mean, it's like I can. It's easy to adjust to things. It's a little confusing. <laughs> right, right. I don't totally. I went to. It was my son's birthday, and we went to the zoo, and went to Red Robin. After, I felt so bad for the server. I could have started crying. It was one server, bartending and serving the entire place, on Tuesday night. And she's had the best attitude, though. I have to say she was great. We, like, just threw money at her. <laughs> and, right. But then there was another table complaining. She wasn't fast enough. And I just wanted to literally go up and slap him upside the head. Like, what is <laughs> right. wrong with you? Right. I mean, these people are trying. But, I mean, people just can't. They, there's not a lot of people working. I mean, it's a real thing. And then I was thankful I mean, I, we are so much better off. I have a lot more staff than that, but we're short staffed. I usually have a staff around 70 and I'm working off about 43 and I usually have about eight managers and we have four right now. Yeah. Big difference. I mean, it's just, so I'm tired. I mean, we're all of us that are working are working overtime. Yeah. And then there's a lot of people that are not working (laughs) that need to probably come back to work at some point. Because the rest of us are getting tired. We all need a vacation. <laughs> and that's the hope. <laughs> and, that, and, and that's certainly the hope. And that's the message I wanted to get out is, is exactly to your point as far as uh, our audience and anybody who sees this to, to extend grace when it comes to the servers, to extend grace when it comes to the manager that comes over to your table and, and to respect the moment in history with all that you're dealing with. So in dealing with all those stresses that are out there that we know exist, um, I think a great solution is to enjoy some of that Mojo's Cajun food. But I have to ask you this question. Um, in addition to just being, you know, literally known, I don't think just in this area, I don't, I think Midwest and even further and the social media following and, and everything else is just so massive and growing. Um, what else is Mojo's about besides the incredible award-winning Cajun food? I don't, uh, Kind of, you know, we sort of go with the flow <laughs> and what's going on. Um, I got to make a lot of really good friends this year from the pandemic. Honestly, I'm mean, super grateful. It's just, it's amazing how many people are out there that really, really want to do good. And just from like that employee day. And then when, 
we had everyone was out of work. I mean, musicians and comedians, and I mean, all of us were in the same struggle. It wasn't just restaurants, artists. I mean, anything in the arts, basically. Yeah. And so, you know, we started having all these ticketed events, but it was in the breweries. We would hook up the breweries to try to sell their beer before it was going bad. <laughs> right. And we would have these comedic shows and music shows. And, oh, my, it was, like, actually the most fun. And then you make more friends and more friends. But we'd always tie it into a charity somehow. And because everybody that you know has someone that they know that's struggling in some massive way. Mm. So we would tie that into it and then you're helping those people and then you meet these people and then it just, it's amazing when you meet a bunch of really awesome creative minds, what you can come up with to change big things. And I think everybody that works there shares that same sort of idealism, is that the word Mm -hmm. I'm looking for? And we get know super pumped about it I mean you get really really excited like the mural we're painting that huge mural right now Rojo Garcia yeah who is he's such a badass he (laughs) he's back there just with spray cans it's the coolest thing if you can see it it's not done yet it's almost done but if you can kind of see as it goes but we just kept having parties in the back and we're raising money because one of our um really good customers we've known their family for a long time dan reyes and he comes back from i believe he was marine and they he is the founder of or a director of the foundation tribute to the troops oh yeah and they have a section that gives money to the fallen heroes children's education fund so we were went live on all these nights having parties, watching the mural get painted, had various musicians come in. And while the painter was actually DJing, (laughs) and then we have like Ellis Ryan on the saxophone coordinating. It was just the really the coolest thing. We just trying to raise money for these kids and people just get behind it. Especially, you know, everyone likes a good party. Yeah. Yeah. For a good reason. Well, it's been amazing uh, as I've shared with you been following that social media journey that you guys have been on was just watching a Facebook live in the back there the other night. And it just, to your point, it is very contagious. It's something that you want to be a part of. You see that creativity coming back to life. And I just applaud you guys for, for doing that. We've talked about 2020. We've talked about 2021, Jamie, looking into the future, um, 2022 and beyond what's, what's the vision for Mojo's? (sighs) Well, after I take a lengthy vacation. <laughs> well, well deserved, we'll say. Right? Well, our catering from all this, I mean, I feel super fortunate in so many ways. I hate to ever complain. I'm sure staffing will even out at some point. Yeah. Um, but our catering's taken off, and we get to do all these really fun shows now. Yeah. And we get to do the backstage of the shows now, which is really cool because we get to be with the really, really cool people. <laughs> right. That's where you want to be. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And uh, so we're in the process of buying like this really neat refrigerated truck to make it easier because we're getting so much work that way. And I invested in this uh, land out in Manhattan with my friend who does all these fairs. Uh, it's 40 acres. to start doing like concerts in the park and catering weddings and all this other stuff so oh my gosh (laughs) i need really need to build up the staff now yeah (laughs) so i can start building that staff but that sounds like fun because honestly the parties are my favorite well you can't tell well and how exciting is it just from uh again that that i idealistic view that coming out of all this, that's what people want to do. They want to get together. They want to hang out. They want to have a party. And and you're going to facilitate that. That's that's amazing. Well, we are social creatures. So Absolutely. <laughs> you must give that to them. And the kind of huge events and stuff we can throw with that and the really interesting menus that we can put out with that, it's just... It's kind of thrilling. I cannot wait. So exciting. Well, we're, we're so excited to see that journey continue. I can't tell you enough. Um, in closing of the interview, like we always do, um, as I mentioned, you've been nominated by multiple people uh, to be considered a real community hero. But I have to ask you the question, uh, Jamie, who is your hero? Oh, my gosh. Well, 
besides, it's going to sound weird, but my kids, honestly, they're just unbelievably resilient with everything. And whenever I'm losing hope, I mean, I mean, they're just always so happy and they're so easy to please, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they just bring you back down to the basics, no matter how absorbed with yourself you can get in your problems, the smile and the joy that comes out of them just so effortlessly. What a beautiful answer. What a beautiful answer. Well, I can't rave enough about Mojo's. Uh, I cannot tell everybody we were talking before the, the show. They got to go try the alligator burger. Uh, tell them Joe sent you. Um, but Jamie, thank you for being a guest on the show. And we hope everybody, if they haven't had the pleasure of checking out your spot uh, in downtown Plainfield, that they do it very soon. But thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to another episode of Not Your Average Joe, powered by Mortgage Message. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care. Hi, I'm Jamie Littell. I was just a guest on Not Your Average Joe. If you know any community heroes, please let us know.